Hi there. Welcome to my build of Voodoo 6, a really exciting 40 inch flying wing. Now in the last couple of videos we got the basic structure of the wing finished. Uh, before we can do anything else we need to actually think about the, the, the tail booms, fitting those and also building and fitting the tail plane itself. Now, the only modification I'm going to make to this wing, probably, is I'm going to do away with the central servo and the control linkages here to operate the ailerons, and I'm going to be putting in wing servos, one either side. But before we can actually fit those, we need to have those tail booms in place. So that's, that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be looking at the tail booms, these 116 ply tail booms we prepared a while back, and we're going to be building the, uh, the actual tail structure itself. I've now cut the slots in the, the tail boom where they fit over the, the rear training edge and onto the wing. And to get that size, I just put it on the bench, put the end of the wing on it and drew around it. Now, this bit here needs to be as snug as possible on this trailing edge. And this needs to be as little as possible cut out, just enough to allow it to slide over that trailing edge because this essentially glues onto the rib here and it presses up against the, uh, the spars there. So that wants to be a nice, uh, nice tight fit on here and as little cut out as possible just to get it over there. Now we've got two of these booms and they go on the outside of the rib like that. Now we've also got a spacer which I've made, a, an aerofoil, which just move that a little bit further that way, which fits between the tail booms on the centre line at a zero, zero angle to the line through the wing. And we can see here I put a line down this boom which is the, the line on which the rear elevator sits. It's also the line on which this spacer aerofoil sits. And this line continues right through the center of the wing and is at the same level to the top of the engine mount. If you remember when we put the engine mounts in in the last video, that is on the center line of the wing. So essentially we need to have this continuous straight line right the way through to the engine mounts. Now, I've been thinking about the best way that we can set this up accurately. And we could just put it on and try and eye it up. But actually the way the wing is with the engine mounts and that, it's very difficult to, to, to eye it up and to eye the center lines. So we're gonna be a little bit more technical on, on this. And I'll show you the way I'm gonna set it up. Now, I've got a piece of plywood here, and I'm going to clamp that onto the top of the engine mounts, which we know is our zero, zero uh, line. And I'm going to sit that on that steel block. And we now know the interface between the underside of this ply and that steel block is our zero line through the wing. Or it is at the front at the moment. Now, we've got two more blocks which are identical heights to this steel block which we're going to put in the just put here at the back and what I've got I've got a 1.8 millimeter steel rod that passes through the holes that are in the rear of the ribs now when those ribs were made, they were all bolted together with three millimeter bolts. And those holes were exactly on that center line through the wing. So if I put this 1.8 millimeter rod in and I sit the front on that block and I sit the rod on these two blocks here, we now know that this, the centre line of the wing, is exactly level with the table with the, with the exception, there is a slight exception to this the holes in the wing on the centre line at the back here are 3mm holes because they had 3mm bolts 
This is a 1.8 millimeter piece of steel. So actually it's slightly lifted up by about 0.3 of a millimeter, but I'm not going to quibble over that. That's close enough for me, 0.3 of a mil. So right now we've got the center line of the wing going through from blocks to blocks. Now what we need to do with these tail booms, on this center line I put in a, a two millimeter hole there and I've done that on both of them. These will eventually be the fixings points where I'm going to screw through to fix this aerofoil, uh, this, this aerofoil into place. But we're going to use that as a center reference point and we're going to put in this two millimeter piece or 1.8 millimeter piece of steel. We've got nuts, bolts and wash uh, sorry nuts and washers and we're going to set this up at exactly the right distance, so the same as this aerofoil. And we're going to sit this on blocks and that will give us our straight line through the wing. A straight line with that steel sitting on blocks, it will, oops, let's get this one with the line on. So if that, uh, that piece of two mil there sits on blocks that will give us a straight line right through the wing because all the blocks, top of the, all the blocks are the same height and they're all on the center line, uh, being balanced on the center line. So hopefully I've explained that. I'm going to set this up now and we'll come back and have a look once we've got this set up and made sure that the actual uh, cutouts here are correct to give us a nice parallel line with these booms or a nice straight line, centre line, with these booms. Right, well I've now got all this set up and it's really exciting to see it all together. This is the first time I've seen it with the booms on in the right spacing and, and that and it, it, it's good to see it starting to take shape. I've put all of the steel blocks on some 116 balsa simply because I needed a bit of height throughout to stop the the tail ends of these booms touching the table, which obviously wouldn't give us a very good uh, accurate measurement. I've spaced them with this threaded rod with the nuts and washers, so it's the same spacing as our aerofoil spacer that goes in the back. Now I've sat them all on the blocks on these three, well four points I suppose here, uh, here and there, and that now runs right through the centre line of the boom through the centre of the wing and level with the top of the engine mount. The only slight caveat to that is that this is a 1.8 millimetre piece of threaded rod on the centre line. So actually this is 0.9 half the thickness of the thread, at rod, threaded rod too high. So to compensate for that I've put in some spacers here, some shims out of cardboard which are exactly 1 point, uh, sorry, 0.9 millimeters high to compensate for that extra height we've got on the back here. Now here, because this was 1.8 millimeter rod in a three millimeter hole, this was about 0.3 too high. If we, we talked about that in, the, in a previous clip. So what I've done is I've just put a, a single shim here to lift that up about, uh, about half a mil, whereas I've put a double here. So now, anyway, what I'm 100% confident about now is that this centre line is correct and passes exactly through the wing and level with the top of the, uh, the rails. What I'm going to do now is just check the fittings here, that they butt up equally against the, the struts and that they're not proud top and bottom, which they don't appear to be and then I'm going to epoxy all this in place and um, and leave it I'm going to use my 30 minute zap epoxy so I'll use plenty of epoxy to get that nice and secure and uh, and then we'll come back and have a look at that right, well this is uh, all cured nicely and I'm really pleased with that it feels quite substantial now it feels uh, feels more solid than I, I, I thought it would I've still got the uh, threaded rod in the back here and I'll, I'll leave that just for the while anyway just to, to give it a little bit of support. 
I, I realised that since the last video I've actually sheeted these front leading edges on the top and I did that just the same as the underneath with CA along the back and rolling it round and, and, and CA on the front. Now you may have realised or you may have seen a little bit of wire in the front and thinking what's that for? Well I use that just to hang it up on the wall when I'm trying to keep the wing out of harm's way. So that's done for the moment and um, I'm going to start to build the elevator now. Now the elevator is built on top of a piece of 116 sheet. Actually if I just show you, get the wing back, the, the elevator itself just sits in the back there and, uh, and, and goes like that and um, hinges into the uh, support section that goes across there, it hinges into that. So let's just hang that back up, get rid of that. So we've got this one 16 piece of sheet and we've just got a load of 1 8 by quarter which I cut myself from a, a piece of sheet and they just form a frame on that with a, a, a strengthening section here where the hinges go. I'm going to be putting four mylar hinges into this and We've got the end pieces and then there's just a, a zigzag affair that goes across and you can possibly see on the on the video i'm not sure where i've just put a very light pencil line just to, and, and the and the points where they they meet just to uh, give me an idea as i'm cutting that out so i'm going to be caing all that and then i will probably once that's done use the, the aliphatic resin or some pva just to put on top of the spars and then i will weight that down, a bit of board and, and weight that down and let that set. It's probably easier doing that than putting micro holes in here with a pin and, and um, wicking CA through. I'd, I'd rather put on the, the PVA. So I'm going to get on and do that now and then we'll have a look at uh, and what we've done afterwards. Now I've got the elevator off the board and I've given that a good clean up just to, to sand that roughly for now and I need to think about how I'm going to profile it, in fact if I'm going to profile it on the plans itself it doesn't show any profiling, just square edges but I might just add a little bit to it. And you can see on the wall behind me we've got the plane hanging up with the booms nicely glued in place and that's starting to look really good now it's taking shape. I think what I need to do now is is I'm constantly thinking about the the weight of this and how it's going to balance out with that long tail and also that quite large nose extending forward with quite a big engine on it but before I can think about the balancing I need to finish those essential things that can't be moved around so, because for example the, the uh, radio gear and the batteries in the main body of the, uh, the wing, we can move backwards, we can move forwards with very little consequence over a certain distance anyway. 
But what we need to do is finish those things that can't be moved like the wing servos and the control surfaces for the wings, the ailerons. So in the next video I'm going to be looking at that, I'm going to be fitting the wing servos and, and the control surfaces and probably just doing the, the sheeting for the underside. Those things that we can't move and then after that and only after that we can start to mock it up, balance it out and see where we need to put things like the battery and uh, start to make provision for that. So thanks for joining me, I hope you've enjoyed that. Please subscribe, leave me a comment, it'd be good to hear what you think and uh, come back and join us for the next video and see how this build develops.